Hello subscribers, today is March 12th, 2021 and this is a market recap for MasterChartsTrading.com As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. Your contributions and your support and your likes is what keeps this channel going. So thank you for doing this. All right, stocks are continuing to push higher. The Dow Jones made this, uh, and the small caps made the record. Nasdaq, mm, you know, underperforming for now. We'll see if it means anything. Um, I'll give you a, a really nice example of a recent trade for TripAdvisor. Then we'll get into the bond universe and we'll look at uh, long, intermediate, and uh, again, uh, and now today we'll look at also short term yield. So it's very kind of concerning to me. Gold entered the bear market. How about that? So I'll explain what I mean by that and why I am short gold. And we'll fill, uh, finish up by Bitcoin and Ethereum and it's going again, I think, to new records. I also have two more newsletters. Um, these are paid newsletters. So if you're interested, you can sign up at masterchartstrading.com. And I'm gonna cover all of these stocks uh, in some Forex, mostly in the elite newsletter i cover you know large caps and um, etfs uh, while in the speculator i mostly cover mm, you know speculative stocks all right so let's get right into it so first of all um, i use my own proprietary trading indicators and you can see them on this chart they are this green blue red and yellow lines you can find out more about them by going to everyonecantrade.com that's everyonecantrade.com you can also go to mastercharts.trading.com and you'll get to the same place so this is a trading indicator so you can sign up for them i have three packages right now but some of those products are also available separately so if you really really just want like one thing just send me a message go to help contact send me a message <clears throat> so what do these indicators mean um, how do we use them we or rather I do uh, the way I use the indicators um, they are basically mm, support resistance lines uh, you can think about this you can think about them as moving pivots uh, you can also think about them as trend setting indicators so how do we set a trend and how do we trade with the trend this is s&p 500 uh, in mini futures but you can use any uh, security uh, and please note that this is a daily chart so see see where i clicked right there on d uh, you can change it to all kinds of other intervals but honestly for humans the best thing to do is just keep it at days. Why? Because humans don't have a lot of attention. Like I can sit in front of a computer for, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour. But what if the weather is nice outside and I want to go outside and I have a trade on like, you know, five minute chart and I can't leave. So um, I have kind of given up on, you know, trading intraday. Uh, the reason being is because if you trade on daily charts or higher, like weekly or monthly, uh, the results are just so much better. Um, and also the stress level is uh, inexistent, basically inexistent, because you look at the chart once a day before the close um, and make a decision what do you want to do. You want to buy, sell, do nothing, and then just move on with your life. Uh, if you trade an intraday, like a five-minute chart, for example, yeah, you can do it, but it's, you know, look at each of those sticks as five minutes, so you'll need to sit and watch it, and it's just really, really tiresome. So, yeah, some people like to do this. I, I don't. You know, I cannot get tired of it. So I trade on daily charts. And here on daily charts, we can actually go back, way back when, to when our pandemic has started which was uh, sometime in February, March of last year. We had a collapse. Then we started printing a lot of money and uh, we started buying. So this is a breakout and it's a clear breakout. Uh, you know, these indicators are not drawn by hand, so they're calculated. 
So this breakout right there where I'm hovering occurred on 29th of April 2020. Uh, I had a question, uh, you know, people are asking me, I, do you still have these positions open from 2020? I do in uh, retirement accounts because uh, back here, see where it says exit alert, back here on February 25th, 2020, I exited all of my stock positions, including the retirement accounts. And then in April here, I re-entered uh, my positions, especially in retirement accounts, but also in, you know, just regular trading accounts. Uh, but in trading accounts, it's not as fun to sit in a position for a year. It's also, even though it's probably more profitable, um, you know, I just talked about how I don't want to sit in five minute charts, but I also don't want to sit forever in the position. So this type of longer term uh, trades uh, with ETFs or mutual funds are pretty good uh, if you do, you know, 401ks or retirement accounts. However, some people still do the same thing. They just buy S&P 500. For example, here's, um, let me see, Here we go. I'll give you S&P 500 ETF SPY. And it's identical, see, it's the same thing. So we were buying it back in April. And um, we're basically just trading higher and higher. It looks like we almost made a new high. Let me see if we made 39585. Here is 3959. So we almost made a new high. So notice how bullish, how strong this market is. Uh, you can see that indicators show good buy points, but a really good buy point is around the blue line. And notice that since April of last year, we haven't even touched the blue line. We, we just kept pushing higher. We touched the green line. We came up from above, came back to below it. But notice that since uh, November of last year, we haven't even touched the green line. So we just kept going straight higher. Can this continue indefinitely? Yes. Uh, a trend is a trend until it is no longer a trend. And how long does a trend last? We have no idea. <laughs> so another thing is, if you listen to some other uh, analysts, especially uh, fundamental analysts, and you know I have a bone to pick with them. So those fundamental analysts, they would they like to sound smart and they would just like pretend that they know stuff. Whereas in actuality, nobody knows anything. At least I freely admit I don't know anything. But what I know is I know when to exit and when to enter. So me as a trader, uh, I'm a trader. And uh, my job is to open and close positions, to put in orders. My job is not to predict what's going to happen. Because there is no way to do it. Nobody knows the future. Okay, so... Uh, looking at this chart, uh, basically we're extremely bullish. Uh, <laughs> if we pull back towards the blue line, that will be a sweet buying opportunity. But I just don't see it right now. Looks like we just keep pushing higher. Here's Dow Jones. Uh, Dow Jones is significantly stronger than other ones, uh, other uh, major indices. So here's Dow Jones at new all-time record highs at 3.2%. Seven seven eight, and uh, yeah, same thing. So notice that great opportunities were to buy back in May June of last year, two thousand twenty, and that's it. Since then, there was really no other opportunity, you know, for my taste at least. I like to buy around the blue line. You can see there was no; it didn't even come down to that uh, level. So we're looking at uh, just very very strong bullish market. Uh, NASDAQ, also pretty similar picture, so we're looking back here uh, at the opportunity to enter. This is the last opportunity to enter, was in April of 2020, in my opinion. Notice that this is, I would consider it a low risk opportunity to enter, because, you know, the higher it goes, where are you going to put your stop? 
you know, when we enter, like for example, back here in April, and we put our, uh, this is our, you know, long position, we're buying. So long position means we're buying. If we want to do short position, means we're selling. So I would have put my stop back in uh, April of last year. This is how I would have done my trade. So I would have entered the round, you know, 210, and I would have put my stop at the yellow line. And then I would have put my target around the green line here, somewhere around there. Once the target is reached, I would have advanced my stop to entry. See, at this point, I cannot lose money. So it's important for me to, you know, not lose money. That's number one. But it's also nice to make some money. So <laughs> first, we avoid losses. Second, we make money. So notice that this, this NASDAQ is just incredibly strong. Look at this. There was not an opportunity. There was no pullback. Uh, right now, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. So it's like the only major ETF that actually came down to even the green line. And green line is, I would call it weak support. So it's not really... It's not really something to think about buying here. I, I wouldn't be buying up here. If it comes down towards the blue line 273 currently, then I would be thinking about buying because that's truly a good opportunity. But up here, it's just, the risk is huge because if I buy it up here, I would have need to put my stop way down here. You see how far? That's a huge step. Um, whereas if I'm buying at the blue line, that's a lot smaller, you see. If it comes down even lower, uh, that's also a, you know a, a nice thing. But when we're coming down towards the red line and below it, uh, there is a reason for that, and that usually means caution for me. Here's small caps IWM, also record highs. Again, new record highs today. Uh, the last opportunity for me was you can clearly visualize it again so again you know this is the reason why i just absolutely love using my indicators is that it's so clear y you you could be somewhat brain dead in fact we have a robot and the, the robot is well it's pretty brain dead but it can it can open positions like that um and see how nice of a gain that was you see that's a 63%, almost 64% gain. So, right this instant, looking at the latest price action on small caps, you can kind of see right there where I'm hovering, price came down towards uh, the green line, touched it. So, this is weak support, but even this weak support was immediately bought. And now we get to record highs again. So, the stock market is very bullish. Um, can it continue higher? Absolutely. Can it continue higher indefinitely? Absolutely. When would the turnaround come? Nobody knows. Don't worry about it. Uh, look for buying opportunities. We're looking for stocks with buying opportunities. And this is why I'm going to show, you know, many stocks, and especially in my other portfolios and elite and, and uh, speculator newsletters look at this we're buying all of the stocks because they were they fit our parameters so uh, you know they would come down towards the blue line or for example they were becoming from below the yellow towards the blue line so uh, a, a new breakout uh, but chase i don't want to be chasing uh, small caps up here there's no point uh, there are many many other opportunities yes it's not you know the, the other stocks are not, not ETFs, right? They're actual stocks. But even with that, we're looking at, so that's biotech as an ETF, solar as ETF, utilities, Brazil, China, those are also all ETFs. So if you only trade ETFs, you can also use my, uh, so, uh, use my system for that. And uh, here's a great example of how I think about uh, trading and how I think about specifically breakouts. So 
this is TripAdvisor, and I have two, you know, newsletters. One of them is called Elite, and this is more for pullbacks. So a pullback trade would be like small caps. So, for example, uh, here in August of last year, the stack was already above the blue line already above the support resistance line and then pulled back towards the blue line so this is a pullback trade <clears throat> now if i wanted to trade uh, a breakout I, i'm thinking somewhat opposite but still the system is more or less the same you can see that the stack was below the yellow line so it's basically a 52 week lows and additionally it was extremely oversold from before the pandemic started um, so, you know, more or less around the where the pandemic started. And it's just basically, oh, I'm sorry, this is 2019. So, yeah, it was way before 2019, 2020, uh, beginning of the pandemic. So, this is from two year. So these are actually two year lows uh, back here. And um, what happened? Why did, why did I even, you know, start thinking about it? I mean, look at this just complete collapse. Uh, it used to be like in the, you know, sixty dollars, and uh, here I am in September, October of last year, looking at the stock, which is now like twenty dollars. <laughs> you see, uh, why would I be buying such a collapsed stock? So I'm looking for a breakout, and the breakout came, and it was extremely clear. You see how the stock was way below here and then it closed above the blue line and this is all the information i needed you see i didn't need to know what stock it was it happened to be trip advisor but it fit our parameters so it closed above the blue line at this point this is considered a breakout and i would buy it here in fact we uh, i sent an alert to my subscribers some people actually bought it here uh if you didn't get stopped out, congratulations, because look at this move. That's a 134% move. <clears throat> so if you bought, for example, options back here in November, usually that's three times. Uh, so if the total gain for the stock is 134, think about option that's three times so that's easily 400 percent gain uh, using an option which is about maybe a year out so this is the type of trades um, we do in the speculator newsletter so this is a speculator newsletter this is a breakout in speculator we use mostly breakouts while in the uh, elite we usually do pullbacks so this is the type you know this is the type of trade again extremely easy very simple all you need to do is just sign up on my site and i will um, allow you to use my indicators on tradingview.com this is tradingview.com interface you see what i'm trying to tell you right there tradingview.com and it's free the interface is free the indicators are not Okay, switching gears this is TLT treasuries so again I bought myself I, I you know this was just a normal pullback trade so treasuries were in an uptrend you can see up arrows we were buying them I uh, made an all-time high back in March actually exactly a year ago and um, you know a few months later in June I'm like okay this looks like a nice pullback uh, looks like it's done I'll go ahead and buy it here in fact you know I made a little bit of money here then I decided to do it again I bought it again here on September 10th but this time it didn't go in my favor so I am freely admitting right now that I have losses and if you think that traders don't have losses or if you think that because I'm admitting it uh, that I have losses that you shouldn't be studying from me uh, you're wrong uh, because everybody has losses uh, and those who don't admit uh, are the ones that should be you know avoided 
so back here uh, in September 10th, on September 10th, I bought this treasury bond ETF, TLT. And, um, you know, it failed. When did it fail? It failed on the date of insurrection. Did it fail because of the insurrection? No, it failed because of the technical trading. This is the reason, you see? It could have been any other day. And this is when I exited my long trade. In other words, uh, back here I bought it, and here I closed my position at a small loss. Some of my clients were able to buy puts or sell short TLT here, and were extremely correct. Look how correct they were. So let's say you bought puts here on the 27th of January, you are very correct. You have 11% uh, you know, gain in your favor. But like I said, if you bought an option, that's three times. So you are easily 30 to 40% plus right now. Um, can it bounce back? Absolutely. In fact, I thought that this candle on the 25th of February, this is a classic hammer candlestick. Uh, so we got a long tail, long shadow of the bottom, small shadow of the top, you know, small little body here. I thought, okay, this is it. This is the hammer candlestick we should be buying. Uh, or rather, <laughs> some people would think that we should be buying. I, I, I did nothing at this point. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, maybe we'll get a pullback and then we can get short again. But notice that what happened is... Uh, <laughs> Some people say that, but isn't it oversold? Yes, but look, now it's even more oversold. So those concepts uh, of oversold, overbought are quite... Mm, they're not exactly useless, but they're not exactly useful either. Uh, they are applicable in certain mm, situations, uh, and also they're applicable in situations, but you need to... <laughs> You need to really know what you're looking for, I guess. So don't worry about oversold, overbought. Um, worry even less about the shape of the candle. Uh, candles are they are important, but they're not that important. Uh, worry about uh, intermarket analysis. So you know, let's say bonds go down, stocks go up, right? That's intermarket analysis. Worry very little about that. And um, completely avoid fundamental analysis. So if somebody tells you like, well, because they're printing money, this is going to happen. Or because, um, I'm going to show Twitter. Twitter is my just favorite. I have a friend who, is a, who thinks he is a fundamental analyst. And so he actually posted this. Uh, well, my friend actually posted this on the 8th of January, when Twitter finally uh, decided to suspend a real Donald Trump account. And he's like, okay, now it's time to sell short Twitter because, and this is important, he used the word because, uh, because he has an idea, because he has a fundamental reason. Um, I have no reason whatsoever besides technical analysis. And he's like, okay, so this is the reason we want to sell short this because of Donald Trump. And I'm like, this makes no sense. If it pulls back towards the blue line here, it almost pulled back. <clears throat> it almost made it, but it didn't even make it. And then it just made a huge new record. So if you sold short here, you would have been, <laughs> hopefully you exited right away. But, you know, people are like, well, I don't want to exit because it's going to be a loss. And then there's going to be a bigger loss. So this is the kind of thing that I'm trying to hammer in. Just completely avoid fundamental thinking if you want to make money in the market, okay? <laughs> Seriously. So TLT and treasuries, they're making a new low. In other words, the, the interest rate is actually going higher. So TYX, so government right now has to pay higher interest to borrow money. Is that crazy or what? Um, and this is the inverse. You can see this is TYX, Treasury Bond Yield. And look, it's breaking out 
<gasps> on the date of the insurrection. Now, this is fundamental thinking. It's breaking out on the date of, on this date because of the insurrection. No, <laughs> it's breaking out above this support resistance line and it happened to be on that date. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a sore throat. Okay, so now we made 52 week highs, 25th of February, and this is a classic shooting star candlestick. Like, okay, this is it. This is the end of it. We're gonna pull back. I even drew this thing. Look at this. We're gonna pull back 15%. Nothing happened. We kept higher. <laughs> you see? So, don't analyze it fundamentally. Think about it in terms of just just what are these colored things here and like a toy it's like a game right we're looking at these colored things and they're doing certain things and if you know what they're doing then we can make a decision anyway so this is intermediate seven to ten year treasury <coughs> excuse me same thing it broke down Thankfully, it didn't break down on the date of the insurrection. Otherwise, people would claim that <laughs> some ridiculous thing. Uh, this broke down here on 16th of February and continued lower. So intermediate uh, bonds are not as volatile as uh, long-term bonds. This is TLT, 20-year 20 20 year plus treasury bonds. They are much more volatile. They're more sensitive. Um, intermediate bonds are not as sensitive, so they, they took a little while. Looking at 10-year treasury note yield, so this is the uh, uh, number that they use to uh, create mortgages, for example. And it also broke out here in February, right there where I'm hovering, and it used to be 1.17, and now it's 1.64. So it's a significant move for a yield. And uh, so far, we don't see a pullback. We just keep seeing higher and higher rate. Now, in general, again, this is this is intermarket analysis. So intermarket, meaning that uh, if bonds go down, stocks go up. Okay, so bonds, especially treasury bonds, really high quality uh, treasury bonds of United States, they tend to correlate negatively so if stocks go up bonds tend to go down so in this case the, this relationship is indeed holding but uh, we did not make this decision to sell shorted because of the intermarket analysis okay we used only technical analysis to make this decision okay so looking even more short term here is SHY shy which is one to three year treasury bond ETF very short term um, they barely move uh, you know they're more or less you know just doing nothing so here I wanted to bring up this dynamic yield curve and I sometimes bring it up so dynamic yield curve, it, this thing on the left here, just shows uh, how many percent uh, is being charged for each of the length of the bond. So for example, for a 30-year bond right now, we're looking at about 2.3%. But let's say um, I don't know, a year ago, that rate was significantly lower. It was like half. So it looks like the rates went up. Uh, the yield curve is not inverted. The yield cur curve is normal. See where I'm hovering right now? It says normal. I'm going to show where it looks like when it's inverted. So there. That's inverted yield curve. And when an inverted yield curve occurs, usually it's followed by a bear market. But not always, because we had also somewhat inverted yield curve almost we came so close not that long like right there for example uh, sometime in late 2019 um, we did have a drop but again this is a 
we didn't have a drop in the stock market because of the yield curve. These are, these are um, intermarket correlations. Uh, they are impossible to trade on. It's almost, you know, as ridiculous as saying that because Donald Trump was banned from Twitter, then you have to sell short the Twitter. Uh, and we can say the same thing that if the yield curve inverts, that means we must sell short the market. No. It makes no sense what I just said. We we must look at the chart, and then if the chart says so, we, we can sell short it. So here we're looking at SHY, one to three year treasury bond ETF. And here we are indeed seeing that. There's the breakdown right there on 3rd of March, okay? What happened on 3rd of March? Um, no idea. But this is the point of a bear market. This is the inflection point. So on 3rd of March, something happened. I don't know what. Uh, and the interest rate has crossed the line. And this, this line is how I define the bear market. So from here on, the tendency of this particular ETF would be to go down. Or I'm predicting that at least. And based on that prediction, I'm going to make a bet. And what do you think that bet would be? Do you think I would be buying it or selling it? Yes, I would be shorting it, selling it. So I want to see a pullback towards the red line again, maybe even higher. Maybe it will go slightly higher. We'll see how this goes. This is a very tight trading range. Notice how how far apart this lines are here from yellow, yellow to green. 1.3 points. But right here, look how close they are together. They're only 0.46, you see? 1.3 here, 0.46 here. So this is a very tight trading range, and things can happen here uh, that are quite unexpected. As right this instant, on the 3rd of March, this is um, a clear bear market. So bear market means trend has changed to down. So when the trend is down, I want to be thinking about buying calls or puts? Puts. I want to be buying puts because I think the stock will go down. You see? I want to be placing bearish bets. So put is a bearish bet. If you, if you have an account where you can outright sell short, that would also be a possibility. Here you will be fighting the Fed. Okay, so the Fed likes to have interest rates which are very low. But what I'm proposing is that the interest, the short-term interest rate, so I'm going to go to the actual interest rate. Um, this is one-year U.S. government bond yield. Okay, so it looks like we're about to break out. It's not exactly the same as what I just showed with SHY, but it does seem like it's about to break out. So if it does break out, we can easily move to like 0.5. So if we look in the d dynamic yield curve, right now the short-term interest rate, which is like right there, is, is basically at zero. Uh, but what I'm proposing is if we see a breakout, and I think we're seeing this breakout, um, the short-term interest rate would go up to like here, where I'm hovering. It's not exactly an inversion of yield curve yet, uh, but it's a beginning, you know. So sometime in the future, perhaps the yield curve will invert and we'll get something like that. Uh, at that point, we'll be thinking, hmm, maybe we should start thinking about selling short the stocks. But, uh, but right this instant, just notice the curve is absolutely normal. We're anticipating a potential move. Uh, but we're not there yet, okay? So uh, this is just something to help you uh, wrap your mind around uh, fundamental analysis versus technical analysis. And again, please don't use fundamental analysis ever. It's useless. All right, moving back, uh, I mean, moving on, rather. Uh, this is dollar currency index DXY. It has been in a downtrend since where I'm hovering here, 2nd of June of last year. Clear downtrend, so where would be where would be short? Where would be we thinking about selling it short? 
at the red line. So we would, we would have short, sold it short at the red line. And since then, there was really no good opportunity to sell short it again. It is coming up to that level. Notice we're, we're getting kind of close to that level. But the important thing is here is that the dollar seems to have bottomed and now has started moving higher. So since I trade gold, since I trade precious metals, I need to know this is actually an important piece of information. One of the few information pieces that are uh, that I use besides pure technical analysis is this intermar intermarket relationship. If the dollar goes down, gold and precious metals get more expensive. Vice versa, if the dollar gets more expensive, precious metals get cheaper. So what we're witnessing right now is we're witnessing, this is gold futures, we're witnessing an actual breakdown in gold. In fact, this is a bear market for gold, right there where I'm hovering. On 8th of March, uh, International Women's Day, congratulations by the way, uh, is this the reason why dollar broke down because of the International Women's Day? No, that's pretty ridiculous, right? Um, dollar broke down for technical reasons, right? Uh, or rather, gold broke down for technical reasons. So, whatever reason it is, I am going to sell shorted. So, I actually did do that. I bought puts on GLD. So, there's a free trade for you. If you're interested, here's what I did. Up to very recently, I thought gold was on an uptrend. But since again, I, I, I know a little bit about intermarket relationship and I was watching the dollar, I can see the dollar was trying to bottom. And so it seems like the bottom was put in and finally it started moving higher. If the dollar is moving higher, it normally pressures uh, precious metals. And it has been doing just that. It has been pressuring them down. Finally, here on the 8th of March, it broke down, the gold broke down, and this is where I shorted it. So I, I am actually open, I have an open short right now. I have, I, have, I have puts on GLD. Will it succeed? Nobody knows. Again, uh, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if I knew the future, I wouldn't be recording this video for you right now. It makes no sense, right? But I am placing a bet uh, in, accordance, in accordance to the system, and the system says, we're in a bear market, so we, need, we, we should be selling it short. So this is what I'm doing. Now, I can almost hear uh, people up in arms saying, but Alex, they just passed some gazillion dollar um, package. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what's a trillion? I can't even think of in terms of trillions. So they just passed this package. Shouldn't shouldn't gold get more expensive because we're anticipating uh, inflation? Now anything can happen, and uh, we're still in the very early stages of this. So it's entirely possible that this is this is it. Maybe we're just gonna go turn around and continue higher. In that case, I will close my position with a small loss and move on with my life. But if I'm right. I could be very correct and my puts could get very expensive and I can sell them later on. So again, don't think in terms of what's happening out in the world because the stock market and the bond market and the precious metals market, forex, cryptos, commodities, um, they, don't, they don't care, okay? They, they're doing their own thing. Uh, occasionally you can correlate uh, world events with movements in the in the market, but the vast majority of the time you can't. So don't bother. Okay. Right now, yes, they passed this huge bill um, that couldn't could increase inflation. They they're basically giving up free money, uh, you know, to 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 citizens. Yet uh, gold is collapsing. So how do you explain that? I don't. I don't like to use, you know, I don't like to uh, attribute explanations. I like to see 
objective reality. To me, this, this is objective reality. You know, I can see that this red stick is closing below this red line. And if this is happening, that means we're in a bear market. So there's my gold trade. Okay, let's look at, uh, start finishing up. Here's Bitcoin. So Bitcoin had an enormous run. And, uh, you know, perfect example is, do you know anything about the fundamentals of Bitcoin? I don't. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I, I know it's 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 just a security. It's a tradable instrument. Um, how did I know back in May of last year that gold? I'm sorry that this crypto Bitcoin will go from you know eight thousand, eight nine thousand here, where we're actually buying it right here. These are actual alerts. How did I know it's going to go to 50,000? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know any of that. Uh, however, the system is very robust and it accounts for technical trading, you see. And so this is what I, this is what we did. Uh, in fact, we had a couple more alerts just very recently, 23rd of January right here and 28th of January. Also very nice move. Went from like 30,000 to 57,000. And uh, yeah, hopefully you caught this move. Very nice. Again, this is a daily chart. You can trade um, this this thing. It's it's uh, traded 24 hours a day. So I have a robust, uh, you know, high level account for TradingView. This is TradingView.com. You see, so I can go for one second. You see, one second. So. <laughs> Even on one second account, one second trade trading, you can still trade it. See, I would have shorted it right there, and uh, I would have put my stop above the blue line, and I, I would have made good money. Look, yeah, forty nine dollars. But this is a one second chart, remember? So um, you can trade any security, especially. If you're trading things like continuous securities like Bitcoin or uh, Forex or commodities, you can trade it on any time frame. But if you're trading stocks, um, I prefer to trade on daily or higher. So daily, weekly or monthly. So uh, Bitcoin, maybe, maybe we'll make a new high. I mean, this is a, this is a bullish pattern. This is like a cup. This is, I'm going to draw in the depth of this cup. So it's a 35% depth of a cup. We can project again. This is this is just pure conjecture. If we project our uh, depth of this cup, then we can say that we could move like that much. So we're looking. If we're gonna break higher, we're looking at like 75,000 easily. Um, is it going to happen? I don't like this type of projections. I, I notice I have never used chart patterns. They're also, I mean, some of them work, some of them are okay. You need to just really, you know, pay attention. What if this is not a cup? What if it's some, something else? Um, so why bother? I have the lines, you know. If I have the lines, I don't need any cups, right? Here's Ethereum also approaching new records. I had the position, you know, I bought it back here in September, closed, you know, took a lot of profits. Uh, on average, I think I got like 40% gain or so, and that was pretty good to me, <laughs> but then it went another, my God. So I closed it like there, I got like 60% gain but if I didn't close it, um, that's 500% gain, you see the difference? So longer is better. It's better to hold longer, generally speaking. Um, 
And the best thing to do is to just trail at the blue line. So trail at the blue line itself, meaning that once it closes below the blue line, that's it, we're done. We can exit and lock in our gains. All right, so that's it for this week's recap. So head over to everyone can trade. That's everyonecantrade.com. Or you can also go to mastercharttrading.com, click on products, sign up for one of the products. So I have three bundles. I have a trading indicator bundle, I have the elite trader bundle, and I have the speculator bundle. So of course, I would highly recommend you get the speculator bundle because uh, you get not only Forex, not only ETFs, not only large caps, but you also get weird looking small caps and really cool breakouts uh, that are uh, happening and I actually have several positions I just opened uh, in some of the stocks uh, <laughs> some of them are actually Brazilian stocks like Banco Bradesco Golin SRS so interesting stocks and we're looking for breakouts um, this is a speculator bundle of course uh, and I highly recommend you get that. If you want just elite service, you'll get you know, ETFs, large cap stocks, gold, forex, commodities, and cryptos. And the trading indicators. So trading indicators are available for TradingView.com. You need a free, absolutely no charge, TradingView account. Then sign up on my site right here. Subscribe, and I'll open the door for you on TradingView. Did that make any sense? If that didn't make any sense, click on Help and click on Contact. I can answer any questions very quickly. All right, that's it for this week's recap. Again, if you have any questions, please ask me. Thanks for watching and have another great training week. Bye-bye.